Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm joined with Chris, our videographer who's also a very big watch enthusiast and we've got something really cool lined up for you today. Oh yes. Oh yes. So £400,000, just under $500,000 at the moment, can probably buy you a really nice piece of real estate. Maybe a two bedroom apartment in London, maybe not in the poshest areas of London, but a very nice place. Yeah. Um, maybe or outside something, of London. Something fancy outside of London or yeah. Rolls Royce Cullinan for example. Or a very nice holiday. Or a very nice watch. I don't know where you holiday for half a million dollars, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's put it this way, I wouldn't be coming back. <laughs> Before we get into the bad boy in the middle, I've got a nice tray of Richard Mill watches to show Chris and show it to the viewers. Richard Mill is often compared to fashion brands like Hublot and I think it can't be more wrong than that. I don't think the two brands should be compared at all in terms of quality. Yes, Richard Mill is probably one of the best marketed brands at the moment, fairly hyped up, all celebrities want it. Definitely the quality does stand for itself and I thought, you know, for somebody who is, I'll put it out there, maybe not the biggest fan of Richard Mill mm. and not maybe handled a lot of Richard Mill. Hardly, I did hardly. want them to take a look, handle it and let me know what you think. They are one of those brands that because of the shape and the look you automatically detest and because Hublot have got one very similar you almost put it in the same category. And Frank yeah. Muller yeah, exactly, back in the yeah. days were the master of the shape and Big somehow bug watches. Exactly and somehow did sink down but uh, it tells you a lot that it's not always about watchmaking but marketing is a big deal in the business, in yeah. the industry. You've got to be well marketed for it to sell. Mm. Having a great product is one thing, having a great product with great marketing, that's where you hit the Rolex status, that's where you hit the Patek Philippe status. Yeah. Because if you made a great watch and nobody knows about it, then nobody's going to care. I mean, the quality on these are, it's one of those ones I've always said, don't like Richard Mill, not a fan. And then when you put it on the wrist, you think, oh, actually, that does feel nice. And it, it, they do look the part, you know. I, okay, admittedly, they might not be the smartest of watches, but there's something about it when you put it on that you think, damn. damn! I think um, the main off-putting thing when it comes to Richard Mill is the price. Yeah. If, if they were, you know, 10, 15, 20 grand watches, everybody would be like, wow, this is some of the best value for money that you can get. Sadly, they're not. No. A lot of these Richard Mills are six figure plus watches, you yep. know, six figures, seven figures and onwards. What I want to show you is probably one of my favorite Richard Mill watches, and that is the RM10. Mm -hmm. And I never claimed to be a Richard Mill mega enthusiast or anything. I was the same as you. I was one of them ones that said, really not the watch for me until mm -hmm. I held one in hand and put it under a loop and realize that nearly everything that you see is done to perfection. So it's not just hype, the, the product does speak for itself and it looks stunning, it feels stunning, but I still have my reservations on some model. You'll realize here that everything is in precious metal. This one here is an RM10 in white gold. So when you hold it in your hands, what I like yeah, about it weighty. is the fact that it's weighty, mm. it's compact, it feels like a dense case. It's one of the smaller ones. If you compare it in size to the RM11 there, yeah. it's considerably smaller. A lot smaller, and a lot thinner as well. This is white gold and titanium, and already you can feel the difference in weight if you put this one in your other hand. No, oh, blimey, yeah, that's... Uh... You can feel that this, the yeah. RM10, the smaller watch, the more compact watch, is actually quite heavier, being a full white gold case. And mm. that's what I like about it. it brings that quality feel to it. I think the quality is definitely there. I think not only is the price one thing people get put off by, I think the look has to grow on you. I think at first I thought, uh, why would you want to wear a watch that looks like a beetle? But then it, it does grow on you. It's once you strap it on, it gets to your head. I have to say, you know, it's, it, that was one of the things that did it for me. I always thought, ah, too much money for the watch, too much money for the watch. And then I put an RM10 in rose gold on my wrist and I thought to myself, hold on a second here. Yeah, it does <laughs> it feel changed my opinion that I've held for a few years mm. in literally split second a second yeah it's just a split second on my wrist I look at it and and I was like hold on a second this is actually quite cool yeah I get it I see why I see why it's expensive Maybe not only it's a quality item they've done it really well in the sense of Richard Mill don't produce a lot of watches what's it five six thousand a year something around to be honest I'm not entirely sure but it's not a lot of watches it's nowhere near Rolex nowhere near Patek Philippe yeah. nowhere near AP so right here you have something you know an RM10 
RM10 in white gold. I think we're asking about 118 or 118 and a half thousand on the website. Then you've got an RM29 here, which again is one of their more compact, dense models. I will repeat and say the smaller cases have always been my favorite and I feel like they'll stand the, the test of time mm. a lot better than the larger cases. And this is something else that I wanted you to take a look at. I much and prefer this later one. I'd like you to put a loop on it and, and just see that this cannot be compared to Hublot. There is no manufacturing problems. There is no scratches on any discs. Everything is just done really, really nicely and everything just works. And the fact that it's skeletonized, I do like That's that it gives you a very thing, good yeah. insight into the movement and possibly makes somebody that finds watches boring to find them interesting. Mm. And somebody that maybe fell out of love with watches, once you start seeing the inner workings, you kind of fall back in love with watches and, and, and gets you back into the watch industry. You can get very easily bored in the, in the watch game, I would say. Especially when you see the same Rolexes day in, day out. And again, just like price has been the thing that goes against Richard Mill, I feel like the popularity of Rolex is what's starting to go against Rolex themselves because now Rolex is seen as like the watch that you see every day. You only see them. it every day because yeah. everybody's wearing it because it's a very popular watch. They've almost shot themselves in the foot, haven't they? By being very popular yeah. it does kind of work against you sometimes see that on feels it just i know it's not on on but it feels it good feels nice and it, it doesn't feel stupidly heavy because it's not a full bracelet and it no longer feels stupidly expensive <laughs> yeah <laughs> once it's on the wrist you almost it, justify the money to yourself isn't it i'd agree with you there out of all of these ones i must say this one's my favorite and i know it's probably the least complicated i think you like it because of the color i know your I like taste, the gold, you like yeah. the gold or the rose gold i yeah. think if you saw the rm10 in rose as well you would have right. liked it just as much is this one. What I want to get to now is I want to get to the main piece of the show. I want to understand why. I quite like their butterfly system as well. It's very robust. You and know, it's, it's not going to break quick. on you. It almost feels like it will pop open by yeah. itself, but I've never had a customer that came back to us and says, oh, the watch just fell off my wrist. Once it clips in, just that resistance by itself, that and resistive spring in there just wants to hold it in one position. And, yeah. it, and it's very cool and it gives a very premium feel. That's the Even cool the thing. sound of it closing exactly. really I mean, ticks you, a lot of boxes. You know the Nautilus where you're kind of ripping it off yeah. And you think, I'm going to break this yeah. every time I pull it off. It that does have a premium just, feel. That's very nice, I must admit. But one of the main questions that I wanted to answer in this video is, are they actually worth the money? But before we answer that question, I want to get onto the main bad boy in the center there. This is an RM11, but not just any RM11. This is a white, gold, and titanium. You've got the soft white color across the whole watch. White strap, white on the surroundings, white hands, white hour markers. Even the RM11 is not put in a different color. So Everything in there is just soft white. Just the AR coating that's blue. <laughs> yeah, on the glass, yeah, I know. You had a rough time photographing this watch. What is so fascinating about this watch is the fact that it goes for so much money. Mm. 400,000 pounds, we've listed this watch online. Well, to be yeah. more specific, 395,000, call it marketing, whatever. Yes. There's a big difference in the price of this and a standard RM11 in the same composition of metal. About double the price, basically. And because of a limited number. This is where I'm getting to. Mm. This is a limited edition. This is one of 12 pieces. There is nothing that you can read about this watch online. I tried to research this watch and I tried to understand. It's fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that. No, I'm joking. I tried to understand anything. Mm. What makes this different from an RM, standard RM11? Now I can see that colors do not come on a standard RM11. And I can see that, of course, it's, it's stamped in the back, limited to 12 pieces. Yeah. So Does you are one of 12 people in the world that will own this watch. Mm. One of 12 people in the world that will own this watch. I can, when you put it into the grand scheme of things, you know, billions of people in the world, probably a few hundred million people that can actually afford it. Let's say a million people want it, mm. but only 12 can get it. It's mm. absolutely insane. And I can understand why Richard Mill is the master of marketing. I can really understand why these things just fetch the money that they do. It's that limited production. It's a quality item, very well marketed, endorsed by a lot of celebrities. A lot of celebrities. And they've played their game really, really well. They've, they've, they've been the masters of creating like rugged mm. movements, shock absorbing. I mean, they've got stuff you can hit with a baseball bat and it'll be fine. Exactly. I mean, you 
always see Rafael Nadal wearing his Richard Mill in yeah. the game. And that's but like Roger Federer, Rams, isn't it? Exactly. That's like and Re Roger Federer would usually remove his the watch. Rolex, yeah. He would put it on before and after, yeah. never actually during the game because it weighs a ton. Mm. But not only it weighs a ton, it can't actually. And I can tell you that because from experience, I've, I've done my fair bit of sport. Whilst Rolexes are very robust, they wouldn't handle that sort of impact, continuous Regular, impact, yeah. especially by somebody like Roger Federer. I mean, these guys have taken on the F1 market as well. So they are proper in the sport slash action kind of market where Rolex kind of used to be. Yeah. Rolex were the tall watches. Now they're kind of more a luxurious watch that people are happy to pay over the odds for. And these have kind of filled in a spot, obviously not for that price range, but you got to remember they're only 25 years old as it's well. a fairly young company very, yeah. it doesn't, very you know, compared company. to rolex which is over 100 years old this is a fairly young company so it doesn't have anywhere near the history but then you have to look at brands like langer for example it's rich in history but it died out and it was relaunched <laughs> well they in, in died the out on purpose though, yeah, didn't yeah. It? but it was relaunched in the 90s so yeah. when you look at their modern range it doesn't go that far back now i'm not comparing like for like but what i'm trying to say he here is that you know that's one of the things that went against Richard Mill price and the fact that it's a young brand so where do we see the future for it exactly it's one of the very few brands that actually stayed and held their price during this whole yeah. thing that we're having COVID and, 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 and post COVID mm. but before we carry on on this and we give our final opinion what I wanted to do is just outline some of the main features on the RM11 as opposed to the watches behind it here so what you've got here is an RM10 RM29 time and date function time and date function and then you've got a flyback function there with surprisingly because of how busy this skeleton look looks like an annual calendar as well mm. so you've got a it's, it's got a month indicator at the the four o'clock position I mean, and then got, the big window at 12 o'clock for the date. They've got enough space for it, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, it is considerably larger and it's one of the things that put me off Richard Mill, but I feel like the smaller cases will push you into the brand and they grow on you and then you start to be a little bit more accepting of the larger cases. The flyback function here works absolutely amazing. It's very smooth, it's, it's, it's very sharp, I have mm. to say. But for people that don't know what flyback is, you go start, stop and then the reset button if you press the reset button while you're operating the chronograph it will just fly back it will reset the sub dials and it will keep going again and if you were to actually press and hold it does stop completely until you, you release i'm still trying to wrap my head around is this watch worth double more than double. RM, more than double a standard RM11. would you rather have these two or that one i'd rather have an air and a spare so i can knock one around a bit and <laughs> no, get one and, and I, I, I completely get it i mean if you're able to knock around the richard mill then mm. i think money is the last of your worries but True. <laughs> i'd rather have all three then well yeah there is but that. it's what i'm trying to say is well it's <laughs> actually a good question would i rather have these two or this one in the middle it really depends once you start stepping into that sort of value mm. once you're working with six Six figure watches i think the smallest thing on the dial or the smallest extra function starts to add hundreds of thousands in value for example i showed an ap an order mm. rpa that we had on a previous video which is a uh, split minute repeater yeah. chronograph split chrono yeah. exactly yeah. with a split chrono function it was a minute repeater perpetual calendar moon phase yeah it was everything with a split chrono function so everything that you can have on a watch was yeah. there but we've had previously the same watch without the split chrono function saying that it wasn't in platinum it was in yellow gold but it's considerably cheaper even mm. their original retail prices are like a few hundred thousand apart about two hundred thousand apart what for a split, a split chrono, chrono function that's because <laughs> once you reach a certain caliber the smallest bit makes a huge difference now what you have there is limited to 12 pieces and the color option does not come on a standard rm11 so if you really like that configuration you've got to buy this and you'll be one of the of people that has it right. so is it worth the extra money personally i would say the answer is yes if you're looking to lash out that sort of money on the richard mill mm. would i pay extra money to make sure i bought the most the limited rm11 that i can possibly get my hands on yeah then i would say yeah i would go as limited as possible if i find something that is one of two i want that and if i find something that is one of one that's the one that i want <laughs>
That's, but that's it's called greed, right? It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's na- no, no, it, it's natural. It's natural. Yeah. We've all got it in us. Good or bad people, we've all got that bit of greed in us. And this is why when you have a watch that, I can give you even a better example, two watches, let's say limited to 100 watches. One is number 50 and one is serial number 01. Automatically, in your head, which one do you want? Yeah, 01. Would you pay 10, 20, 30% extra to get that 01? Personally, no. It really depends to each their I don't own. Know. I've done I it before. It I've been there before. It depends <laughs> on the watch, I guess. I guess. I guess in some ways, yeah. I guess it depends on the watch. If it's if it's you know an Amiga, one of two hundred limited edition, you know, Dark Side of the Moon type thing. Do I care? Not so much. But on let's say you've got that um, the AP bumper, the bumper up the upstairs, skeleton tourbillon. That's upstairs. number one, and that that is a rare watch. That's that is what you would pay a premium for just to have that number one. Because number two doesn't matter as much. That's exactly. just how it is. But on a lot of other brands, to me, it wouldn't matter. Well, it depends on the price of the watch. That's what I'm saying. Once yeah. you stepped into a very high caliber watches, and you're asking six figure prices, the smallest difference makes a big difference on the price. Yeah. I guess for somebody that wasn't really into Richard Mill, now having three nice examples here, you've got a white and titanium larger case, and then you've got two smaller cases, one in white gold, one in rose gold. Did it sway you into liking Richard Mill? And give me just your full honest opinion. I think yes. I think I, I've definitely got more of a brand appreciation for them. Would I be lining up at Richard Mill's doorstep trying to get on the list for one? No. Mainly because I can't afford it. <laughs> maybe, maybe not just yet. Maybe not just yet. But personally, you've had the same reaction that I've had. I, mm. I think the the negativity about the brand is mainly that oh, it's not worth the money just because of how insanely priced they are and how yeah. expensive they are and the fact that they go above retail. Once you get past that and you actually handle the goods, they start to tick certain boxes for you. Mm. And that's exactly what happened with me. Would I still say buy this over a very classic, you know, Patek. Patek Philippe yeah. that is ultra complicated, something rich in history, I would say no. Mm. But if you are considering Richard it's Mill, should taste. you should you plunge out the money and actually yeah. you know, enjoy it and wear it and, and, and think you've got yourself something really cool? I think yes, I've done it. And I think it's reasonable too. I know it sounds strange saying reasonable when you're talking that sort of money, but it, it's just, it took me a long time to wrap these around my head. And I guess maybe go out and try one. If you're considering one, go out and try, try one, and I think the jump. watch itself will convert you. It will, the watch itself will do the talking. People will judge a book by its cover these days, so it's very easy to uh, judge, really. Look, one, one of the things I do when, when people come and one of you watches here is I hardly ever talk about the actual watch itself. I'm more interested in the person I'm sitting with. We have a chat. And, That's because you're a good salesman. I, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I don't like to refer to myself as a salesman. I, 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 Sorry, I'm sexy a, salesman. salesman. Richard. No. <laughs> Bickley. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> genuine look. I, I like, one of the main things I like about this business is, is that interaction with people. Yeah. And as a result of that, I think people like you, they want to deal with you. The product really speaks for itself. I've always told the customer, because some, some person said, you're not trying to sell me this watch. I said, well, no, I'm not. I said, if you really want it, you would buy it. If you don't want it, then, then you wouldn't. Maybe it's not the right watch for you and I can mm. guide you towards something else. <laughs> I feel like these watches, they talk to you. And if you're into Richard Mill, or if you're even just considering it, once you hold one in hand, and I would say, Say go for the compact sizes before you look at that because maybe an RM11 might be a bit on the Larger. too large of a mm. side for you to uh, you know look Enjoy. at straight away. So maybe look at a smaller size. Yeah, the fact that and, these and are then you will appreciate the bigger size. The fact that these are considered smaller sizes as well as it's mad. They're, they're nowhere near small. But what I'm saying is that if you go out to Richard Mill and go for the bigger sizes instantly, it might be a little bit overpowering if you're not used to wearing a big watch. But if you're used to wearing date just if you're used to wearing perpetual calendars 36 mil even 40 mil you might find that going for a smaller richard mill might be more appealing yeah at a later stage go for something bigger or if you're ready into big watches deep sea sea dwellers and things like that and the big chronographs and the big royal oaks offshores then that's not going to look anywhere near as big <laughs> as an offshore on your wrist this is going to be sitting quite nice i hope that answers many people's questions is it worth the money personally i think yes chris 
feel free. I, I think yes. And before I let you go, just in case you guys think this is a sales pitch, genuinely, these are not the type of watches that I need to raise a sales pitch for. These are the type of watches that I can go on WhatsApp and probably sell within five to 10 minutes. I thought they'd make a cool video. So here it is. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Thank you.